Hello and welcome to this video on relative frequency and expected frequencies. Now suppose we had this question here, how do we find the probability distribution for the throw of a dice? And someone's given you a particular dice and you need to find the probability distribution of it. Now there's two ways, it might be that someone told us that it was a fair dice, in which case we'd theoretically know what the probability is for each outcome. So it could be that we know what the probability should be in theory. So if it was stated to be a fair dice, then this is what the probability distribution would be. And by the way, a probability distribution just means the probability of each outcome. So we've got the different outcomes here and the probability of each. So it could be one, two, three, four, five, six. Now in theory, if it's a fair dice, then it should be a probability of a sixth for each. And these would be known as theoretical probabilities because it's what we expect in theory. But it might be that we weren't told it's a fair dice. We don't know about the dice. Someone's just given us the dice uh, and it could be a biased dice. It could be a fair dice. We don't know. So what would we do to kind of estimate the probability of each outcome? Well, what we do is we could throw the dice a number of times and then we count the number of each outcome. So we have the different outcomes. So it could be one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's just say we observe these particular frequencies, i.e. the number of times we saw each outcome. So let's just say we threw it 100 times and we saw, say, 21s, and we saw 32s, and we saw 10 3s, and we saw 5 4s, and we saw 18 5s, and we saw 17 6s. Now, it could be that this is actually a fair dice and that we just happen to get more twos than, say, fours, just by chance. But if we had no knowledge about the dice and we wanted to estimate the probability of each outcome, what we do is we just find what proportion of the time we saw each outcome and use that as a probability. So what would be the probability of getting a one in this case? Well, I said we threw the dice 100 times and 20 times we saw a 1. So we would estimate that the probability of getting a 1 is just that fraction of the time, so 20 out of 100, or as a decimal, 0.02. And this is known as an experimental probability because we estimated the probability by doing an experiment, by throwing it and just taking counts, but it's often known as relative frequency as well. So it's a bit confusing because it's using the word frequency, but it's actually a probability. So we've got these two different means. We've got theoretical probabilities is when we know what the probability should be in theory, or if we don't know what they should be in theory, we just roll the dice a large number of times, in this case, say 100, and then we estimate the probability based on the count. So we just take each count divided by the total number of times we threw the dice. So let's use that to help us answer these questions here. Alice spins a three-sided spinner 50 times and sees the following counts for each outcome. So we've got outcome A on the spinner we saw 30 times, outcome B we saw 15 times, outcome C we saw 5 times. What is the relative frequency or experimental probability for getting B for a spin? Now do you remember that I said the relative frequency is just the proportion of time we saw that outcome and we're using that as an estimate for the probability. So what proportion of the time did we see a B? Well the total number of times we spanned the spinner was 50 times and we saw a B 15 times so it's simply 15 out of 50. So the fraction of the time we saw a B was 15 out of 50 and we're using that as an estimate for the probability. If we put that as a decimal, it would be 0.3. And what about this second question? A biased dice has the following distribution of probabilities. So we've got outcomes 1 to 6 and the probabilities of each. We've got one missing one here. If the dice is thrown 200 times, how many times do we expect to see a 2? Now this is the opposite of before. Before we had counts and we used the counts to estimate the probability of each outcome. This time we have the probabilities and we want to estimate the count we would see it. Now we first need to find the probability of actually rolling it to and we notice that's missing. Now to work out the probability we know that the probabilities have to add up to 1. So if we add up the other ones, 0.4 plus 0.15 plus 0.1 plus 0.2 plus the 0 and that comes to 0.85. And therefore the remaining probability, i.e. the probability of getting a 2, must be 1 minus that. So the probability of getting a 2 
is 1 minus 0.85 which is equal to 0.15. Now, if there's a probability of 0.15 of getting a 2, another way of saying that is that, on average, we expect to see a 2 about 15% of the time. Does that make sense? If the probability of getting a 2 is 0.15, that means that 15% of the time, we expect to see a 2 when we throw our dice. So all we need to do, therefore, is find 15% of 200. Or a quicker way of doing it is we just take the number of times 200 and we times it by that probability there of 0.15. That's the same as finding 15% of 200 and that will give us 30. So we expect to see A2 30 times. So just to give you a formula for that, expected frequency, like the expected number of times we'd expect to see a particular outcome, is equal to the number of times done so it might be the number of throws, etc. More formally, we'd say it's the number of trials times the probability of that outcome. So we did the number of times done, 200, times the probability of a particular outcome, 0.15, and that gave us the expected number of times we would see a 2. That doesn't mean we necessarily would see a 2 30 times in 200 throws. The dice still behaves randomly. We could see a lot more uh, twos. We might see a lot less twos. We might see no twos at all, just by chance. But on average, we'd expect to see a 2 30 times, and that's why it's known as expected frequency.